Hi everyone, it's Monica, and welcome to the very first video for Christmas in July. Well, today we're going to talk about Christmas designer paper. And if you're like me, you have tons of Christmas paper. And even though you have tons of Christmas paper, once we get closer to the holiday season, when all the new releases start to come out, you're going to buy more Christmas paper. We just can't stand it. We just love the way that it looks. We love getting new items in the mail, especially around the holidays. And we love designer Christmas paper. But what I want to talk about today is using up some of our stash. And July is a great time to take stock, not only for your Christmas paper, but for your Christmas stash in general. And to be honest, many of us aren't ready to start making Christmas cards in July, but July is a great time to take stock. Pull out your Christmas stash, pull out your paper, pull out your stamps, pull out your adhesive, <laughs> just take stock of what you have and what you need. Because once we start getting into the holiday season, tons of companies are going to start releasing new product. And you know, as well as I do, that we're going to want to buy new product. But it's really important that we use what we have. And July is a great time to do that. Now, I love my Christmas designer paper so much that I have a little scrap bag that I keep on my desk that I put some of my scraps in when I'm creating Christmas cards. There's lots of little pieces that many people would probably just throw away, but these create great backgrounds. And that's what we're gonna focus on today. We're gonna create backgrounds using some of our craft stash, specifically some of our smaller pieces of paper. Now that's not to say that we can't dive into our Christmas pads because sometimes we need bigger pieces and we may not have a scrap, that uh, is, is what we uh, need for our background. And there's no reason why you can't pull out some of your Christmas uh, pads and use those as well to create some backgrounds. And these Christmas pads are great. Not only do they have a variety of different backgrounds, but they also have little pieces of ephemera that you can cut up and use as focal points. Now what I like to do with my scraps of paper is pull out some of my dies, pull out some of my punches and create different shapes because you can use those for your backgrounds. I have this little sidekick that I keep right on my desk and a lot of the dies that I use to create my shapes are thinlets. So this will work perfectly with my sidekick. And we don't want all of our backgrounds to be rectangular or square. We want to have different shapes. So pull out some of your punches and have those on your desk as well. In fact, if you want to just go through all of your scraps first and cut out different sizes and shapes, you can do that as well. I didn't necessarily want to do that on this video. I wanted to create as I go along. But certainly, if you want to just kind of gather up all of your Christmas scraps and cut different shapes, that's a good way to prepare as well. Now, once you're ready to put your backgrounds together, you're going to want to also pull out some of your Christmas washi tape. So if you have all of your washi tape together, um, gather all of your Christmas washi tape and put it in a baggie so that way when you do sit down to create your cards you can just grab that bag and you know all of your washi tape will be from Christmas. And what I also like to do is I like to pre-cut some of my white cardstock from my background and typically when I'm creating these backgrounds um, I'm creating A2 size backgrounds so I'll cut out some white cardstock that measures four and a quarter by five and a half, and I'll have those on my desk ready to go as well. So once I have all of my scraps and my uh, white pieces of paper, my adhesive, my washi tape, my punches, all on my desk, I'm ready to go. And I just grab my glue and I start creating backgrounds. Your backgrounds don't have to be very extravagant. As you can see here, the very first background that I'm creating is just two pieces of rectangular a Christmas designer paper that I'm going to trim down and I'll add some washi tape right down the middle. And then once I finish with my first panel, I move right on to my next one. Now, some of you might be thinking that these types of Christmas cards aren't very fancy. And maybe as a handmade Christmas card, do you want to get a little fancier? Well, I get that because if you've seen some of my other videos, some of my Christmas cards could get pretty fancy. But honestly, I don't have time and I can't send a fancy Christmas card to every single person on my Christmas list. 
So it's important that I have several cards on hand so that way I can hit everybody up on my Christmas list and make sure they at least get a card with a note from me letting them know that I'm thinking about them. And this isn't to say that these Christmas cards don't turn out really nice as well. Uh, you can get as fancy or as simple as you want, but everyone is going to be a little bit different. So as you can see, I'm just kind of going through my assembly line here. I'm just going through my scraps and I'm pulling out my paper uh, to come up with different designs. Now, if you're the type of crafter that needs a plan going into creating your backgrounds, in other words, you need a specific layout or a specific template in mind to follow, there are tons of those that you can find out on Pinterest. All you need to do is go to Pinterest and type in Christmas, or not even Christmas card layouts, just card layouts, and you're get, gonna get tons of templates uh, and ideas for your layouts. And these are just working with scraps of paper. So if you do need to have some sort of a plan before you go in, and you're just not really comfortable at winging it, um, you can definitely do that as well. But honestly, there's no wrong layout. All you need to do is just find paper that's going to coordinate well together and start layering it. It can even overlap. So don't feel like you have to have a perfect uh, aligned card. Uh, you can go as simple as a background as I'm doing here and just adding a layout on the top or you can piece your uh, items together as I did on the first card. Now one thing that you might want to keep in mind when you are doing this type of a design is you don't want to have too many pieces of paper that are too busy um, overlapping because that might get a little bit uh, busy when you're looking at it. So you want your card layout to be somewhat cohesive. So as you can see here, I didn't necessarily put green on green. I wanted to break up the colors here. So I went ahead and I added a layer uh, with a little bit uh, lighter color. And then to tie it all together, I came in and I covered the uh, top part of it with this darker green to kind of make it all coordinate together. So do take some uh, time and some thought as to what paper you're going to be choosing when you are putting it together, just to make sure that it is pleasing to the eye and that it is cohesive. And then uh, once I uh, finished adding my band, I went ahead and I added another piece on top and then I was ready to put this aside and move on to my next piece. And as you can see, in no time at all, I've already got two backgrounds put together. Okay, so for my next piece, um, I couldn't find a scrap that was large enough for the background, so I did have to dive into my Christmas uh, pad. Now, like I said, there's no harm in actually pulling out new Christmas paper because, of course, this is paper from last year, and we want to definitely use some of that before we go out and buy new Christmas paper. So if you have to pull out some of your designer paper and trim it down to work as a card base, certainly do that as well. And again, this is something that you can do ahead of time. If you have uh, pieces of paper that's a little bit larger, cut them down. Um, we're working on a four and a quarter by five and a half piece of paper. So typically my rule of thumb is to trim it down a quarter of an inch on each side. So you can create some layers uh, really easily using that formula. Okay, so for my next piece, I went ahead and I had this rectangular uh, die cut and I cut out a couple of pieces um, with that die. And then I decided to create some banners. Um, and if you've never done this before, it's really easy. All you need to do is find your center point, cut a line right in the middle, and then cut your uh, tails uh, right to that line. And you can easily create some um, nice little banners. And when I am adding two banners to the tops of my cards, I typically will stagger them and have one shorter than the other. And that way when they're overlaying, they create some interest. And um, I could have easily used the same pattern paper, but I decided to have some contrast. So don't be afraid to mix and, max, uh, mix and match your backgrounds. All right, now when you are putting these backgrounds together, sometimes you just want to stamp a sentiment. And a sentiment may not show up very well on designer cardstock. So you're gonna wanna definitely cut some uh, of your white paper as well on some of these nice uh, dies. So pull out some of your white paper and cut out some 
uh, pieces where you can easily stamp some sentiments. And you can do this on, uh, like I said, on die cuts. You can do these on circles. You just want to make sure that you have a nice surface so that way you can stamp some sentiments. And in no time at all, as you can see, now I have three backgrounds ready to go. Now, I'm going a lot slower than I typically would. Ordinarily, I would have about two or three pieces of white card stuck out, and I would just start gluing uh, paper down and creating designs. But for the video, I did want to go ahead and just do one at a time. But keep in mind, you can create these in no time at all. And when you are going through your paper stash, if you do have uh, words or sentiments like this St. Nicholas here, you know, use those to your advantage. Um, I ended up cutting this down and then I added a Santa Claus um, as my focal point and it turned out really great. So when you are going through your stash, if you can cut it down to create specific uh, types of theme cards, uh, take advantage of that as well. Now up to this point, I have really been going off of specific layouts and designs. I've been somewhat strategic when I've put my cardstock together and I haven't been real hodge, uh, hodgepodge. But for the last card, I wanna go ahead and show you what I do with some of my scraps when I don't necessarily have any designs in mind. And this is just layering backgrounds, creating kind of like a quilt effect. So that's what we're gonna do next. I would, I would be remiss if I didn't show you that because that is something, again, that you can do really easily and create some great backgrounds. So if you are one of those people that kind of struggle with putting together um, layouts, then this technique is going to be really easy for you. Like I said, the first four cards that we put together, I put together some sort of a pattern. But for this last background, all we're going to do is just going to create somewhat of a quilt effect. And we're just going to cover our white cardstock to create some nice backgrounds. And you can do this um, in lieu of creating patterns because all you're doing is creating um, backgrounds. So if you wanted to start out with a bigger piece of paper, say you wanted to start out with an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, you can easily cover that piece of paper kind of like a quilt and then cut it down. But for mine, what I ended up doing is just starting out with a white piece of paper um, and I'm going to cover that. So as I put this background together, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about my Christmas in July series. So my plan is to put out several Christmas videos this month. Um, and I don't necessarily have a schedule, so you're going to just have to make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and that you um, have clicked on the little bell so that way you're notified whenever a new video comes out. And I'm going to be doing several uh, giveaways. Um, my plan is to just randomly pick some of the commenters throughout the month. And then at the end of the month, I'm going to have a list of all the people that have won something from my Christmas in July series. So in order to qualify to win, you're going to want to make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and that you do leave a comment on every video. And that will increase your chances of winning something. Some of the items that I'm going to be giving away this month are uh, stamp sets. I'm going to be giving away uh, washi tape, uh, Christmas stash, uh, goodie bags, as well as some of my digital images. So definitely uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, follow along all month long for your chance to win. Now I do have a special treat for you as well. On July the 11th, I am going to be participating in a video hop with several other crafters where we're gonna be creating some Christmas projects for you. Uh, so this will give you an opportunity to uh, meet up uh, with some other crafters and get some more ideas and inspiration for your Christmas, uh, Christmas creations. During the week of the video hop, I won't be putting out any extra videos, so that way it'll give you an opportunity to hop along and check out some of the other crafters. Also, all of the projects that I create during my Christmas in July series will end up at my shop. So if you haven't visited my shop yet, be sure to check out tailormadecardsforyou.com. And as a special treat, I will be having a sale on all of my digital, digital items during the month of July. Um, and those will be 50% off. So if you do like to work with digital images, this is a great time to stock up. And I'm going to have uh, several Christmas sets available, as well as a new set that I'm currently working on. So as you can see, it's going to be a jam-packed month. 
uh, and it's going to be lots of fun. So I hope that you've enjoyed my very first video for my Christmas in July series, and this is going to give you a good jump start to putting together some of your Christmas cards. Be sure to stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to be sharing with you some of the uh, finished cards that I created uh, using these backgrounds. And um, again, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that little bell so you'll be notified on the next video. And if you've enjoyed the video, I would sure appreciate a thumbs up. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for stopping by and we'll see you again next time.